Hey everybody and welcome to Q&A Wednesday where I answer the questions that I hear all, all the time about your health and fitness goals. <coughs> Sorry, I swallowed finding that just did not work out for me. <coughs> Anyhow, um, I apologize first of all for last week. Um, very, very sick. You know, it's really funny. I don't get sick like ever. And then all of a sudden with all the, you know, upper respiratory stuff going around. Wow. Um, yeah, you know, if Melissa catches it, it's a doozy because, you know, I have a pretty decent immune system. So uh, finally passed that. We're super excited about that because I will be in Miami next week and I really didn't want to be sick for that. So we're going to be super, super fun. I'm going to be do doing some taping while I'm there, doing some videos, <clears throat> just showing you a little bit about how to travel um, when you still have health goals and you want to still you know, maintain and adhere to that. So it's going to be awesome taking my dad. It's going to, <laughs> I'm really excited to go. Um, so tonight I have a really great topic. You know, I would say that the majority of us really struggle. We think, you know, why can't I resist temptation? You know, when I, I see that donut or that ice cream or whatever your vice tends to be, it might even be salty. You know, it might be uh, potato chips and pretzels and things like that, <clears throat> which, you know, I really giggle when people say, well, I don't have a sweet tooth. I like bread. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you think it turns to? First thing in your system, it immediately turns to sugar in your bloodstream. So it, it, I get it. Like we, we crave things. So there's a couple things we're going to talk about tonight in order to kind of help you to resist the temptation um, when you really have a great health goal and you're really struggling with it a little bit because there are some things you can do. Now, some of those, most of those things are actually pretty honestly simple, but I would say that it takes really some forethought and some planning, which most of us really struggle to do because we think we're so busy. But you know, when you plan ahead, you know, I used to tell people all the time when I would do interviews with people, you know, busy people know how to get things done. So if you're, if you're super, super busy, man, sometimes that pre-planning can save so much more time. Um, not only that, but then of course it helps you to, to fit your goals in and make sure that you're making them a priority. So that's really important as well. So let's talk about resisting temptation. Now, of course I'm talking about, you know, the vices and the foods and the, the goodies that you really seem to get you in trouble. And, and I know they do because all of my clients struggle with it. And you know what? I'm not immune to it either. You know, I struggle when, especially if I'm having an emotional day or just really struggling a little bit. Um, and man, I see some chocolate and it's a problem. <clears throat> so again, I'm not immune to those things. Most of the time I just have better uh, coping skills. So it helps. Um, but I'm going to give you some of the tips that, you know, I have used and, and that work for me. And hopefully you'll find something that works for you. <clears throat> so the first one that I want to talk about <laughs> when it comes to um, really resisting temptation and even those cravings, because although you might not categorize them in the same thing because they kind of mean a little bit different things, um, the, the biggest thing that you can do to help combat that is to eat enough healthy food. Um, you know, I find it really fascinating when I work with someone, especially when I'm coaching their nutrition, the first thing they do when I tell them how much they need to be eating, they're like, oh my word, that's like so much food. And I'm like, well, you know, it's actually less calories than that pizza and beer you had last weekend. Um, but, you know, it seems like a lot because it is whole clean food. And so it's, there's a lot more to it that's lower in calorie. I'm sorry, I'm just still choking on that. <coughs> and so, you know, it is a lot more food volume wise. You know, um, I just heard somebody talking about the other day, if you were to eat 720 calories of broccoli, it's like, like, I can't remember how many cups, like 12 cups, I don't know. It's a crazy amount of broccoli. You can't eat that much broccoli. So, you know, it, it does tend to be a lot more food. If you are eating healthy foods and you are making sure that you are satiated, or at least for the most part satiated, you're going to be less likely to cave when that chocolate cake comes around. Um, so, you know, part of it is don't put yourself in the position of that chocolate cake. Maybe it's at work and you don't have an option. But if you have already eaten and you've eaten throughout the day and you're not starving, that will really help you to combat that. So the opposite side of that is, again, for cravings, if you're eating enough healthy foods, you're not deficient in the vitamins and, and minerals and nutrients that your body needs. And so it's not causing you to crave because it needs you to eat something that has whatever it is that you're deficient in, magnesium, vitamin C, whatever. So if you're eating a variety of good, healthy foods, you won't have those cravings. Those cravings actually mean something. That's your body's way of saying, look, I'm not getting what I need. I need to complete these processes within your body in order to be efficient, but you aren't, giving, you aren't eating the right things that give me the vitamins and minerals and nutrients I need. So again, if you're eating enough and you're eating the right kinds of foods, you'll have less issues with that because on one hand, you're not gonna be starving so that temptation isn't nearly as intense, but also the cravings aren't there because your body isn't producing these hormones that are like, oh my God, I'm hungry, um, to try and make you eat. You understand as your body, 
needs something. And so if you're denying what your body needs, it's going to make it really hard on you. Um, so that's a big part of it. <clears throat> Um, the other thing too is within that healthy food, you need to make sure that you're eating enough proteins and enough healthy fats. You know, I find it really fascinating that we all still think that the, most of our uh, nutrition and our diet should be predominantly carbohydrates, and it, that's not true. Like now, vegetables, different ball game, right? You should have a really good amount of your of your meals as great you know, vegetables because they're so nutrient dense. But when it comes to things like, I mean, of course the processed food isn't good for you anyway, but even with carbohydrates, let's just say fruits and potatoes and things that are plants and are, are grown in the earth, you still don't need to have like 60, 70, 80% of your diet in carbohydrates. Number one, it burns through your system too fast. It can actually, even though, even with carb complex carbohydrates, but more so with simple sugars like you'd find in fruit, you're still gonna have blood swing, you know, blood sugar swings. And so you're gonna get that, you know, you feel good for a minute and then your blood sugar is gonna drop and you're going to crave more sugar because you like how that feels, you have some energy. So then you go through this vicious cycle of, I have no energy, now I've got great energy, now I have no energy, now I have great energy. And again, now you crave the sugar, so that becomes a problem as well. So get enough protein because number one, protein not only builds and maintains your tissues, including muscle, but it also is a thermogenic nutrient, which means your body has to heat up hotter and it takes longer to break it down and digest it. Same thing with healthy fats. Healthy fats will help keep you satiated so that you're not always looking for something to eat. So that's kind of the extension of making sure you're getting enough of the right foods in a healthy diet. Tip number two, learn the difference between hunger and hunger. Because I, I'm going to tell you that most of us don't even necessarily know what hunger feels like, like physical hunger. Um, for those of you that honestly may have never felt it, you know, it feels like kind of a weird tightening of the stomach, like maybe a little grumble, um, versus so many of us have this kind of hunger. It's kind of a phantom hunger. So really, if you don't know the difference, the biggest tell is going to be what helps solve that. So if if it if vegetables will work, if a fruit or vegetable will work um, and won't make you feel hungry anymore, then it's probably a physical hunger. But if it requires that it be comfort food, junk, processed food, whatever, cookies, ice cream, bread, um, it's probably more of a phantom hunger. Um, honestly, I, I'm very aware that I tend to get hungry and wanna eat junk when I'm stressed out or bored. Those are the two things that I really have to, to deal with. But I know it's coming and I know to recognize that at this point, so I can help stave that off just a little bit <clears throat> by doing, um, you know, eating ahead and, and doing some other things. So when it is more of the phantom and the mo emotional and psychological hunger, you're gonna have to find new coping skills, right? You know, you've probably heard, go for a walk, drink a little bit of water. You know, there's some things that you can do. Part of it really does come down to how big are your goals? Are your goals big enough that your obstacles don't matter? Because that tends to be, you know, part of the process is sometimes we just think, well, just this once, which then turns into every day, right? So you have to be careful with that. But um, if you know the difference, um, also avoid getting extremely hungry. Don't wait long periods of time before you eat because once you hit that, a couple things happen. Number one, that you give in to temptation. It's super easy. Uh, but also you feel like you deserve it because you've gone for so long without food. But the problem with that is now you're dumping empty calories, junk, sugar, on top of zero metabolism. So really you're creating kind of the perfect storm, which is you know no metabolism, junk, your body goes, oh, store is fat. <clears throat> So don't get to that point where you're so hungry you'll drive through McDonald's or you just eat, you know, from the candy jar at work. We've got to take, you know, we got to take some advanced choice, right? We got to be con conscious of what we're, the choices that we're making so that we don't have and run into those issues. Number three, don't bring it home. That's the big one. You know, I don't know about you, but when I get stressed out, I start rummaging through the pantry going, what chocolate do we have? Um, and so that's a big one. Again, I tend to crave chocolate. I'm pretty sure because I'm consistently low on magnesium. Um, however, I do supplement that these days to make sure. Um, and it is starting to make a difference. So <laughs> I, I do pay attention to that. But um, if you don't have it at home, you're less likely to literally get in your car, drive to the store, buy junk, right? Um, maybe you do. I don't know. But if you have to go through that process... You know, it's going to be a little tougher than if you've got a bag of Oreos hidden in the back um, and you find it and now the bag of Oreos becomes a bag of crumbs. <laughs> so if the rule at my house is, you know, that's not, my family is not required to follow any sort of meal plan. It's their choice. They've got to be able to make that choice. Um, but the rule is that's fine if you eat those donuts, but don't bring them home because those of us that are trying really hard to be do something specific or really trying to be healthy about it 
we don't want that temptation. So if it's it's kind of out of sight, out of mind, if it's not there, you probably aren't going to be tempted by it. Uh, like I said, if you have to get dressed at 10 p.m. and go run to the store for it, yeah, most of us aren't really willing to do that. So it, it does at least helps, right? Number four, get enough sleep. That is a huge one. Here's the problem. If you're not getting enough sleep, your body tries to provide energy any way that it can. And part of that is, well, if you're not getting rest and recovery, it wants extra calories because it's got to kind of dig down and have something to run on. Problem is, is again, most of those calories are just pure junk, which gets stored immediately as fat. So again, if you're getting enough sleep, it helps you avoid, resist the temptation, avoid the cravings, um, because you've got a whole nother level of, of subconscious stuff that's going on. So, I mean, really, you, you kind of have to give your body the tools to have success. And if you're not doing that by, you know, getting enough sleep. Now, and it's not just getting enough sleep, allowing the time to get enough sleep. So, you know, and part of that's quality sleep as well. Like, if you're running the TV all night, you fall asleep to the TV, it still runs, it's in the background, the blue light's on. You're probably not going to get the best, most restful sleep. Um, because you've got to go through those sleep cycles in order to rest and recover and realize too you build muscle while you sleep you consolidate memories while you sleep you reduce your stress levels you break down certain proteins that have been known to actually be part of some specific diseases um, and you burn fat while you sleep so you know there's huge benefits to getting enough sleep and I'm the number one person to tell some of my clients sometimes when they're like well I only slept five hours I'm like I can't train you uh, because there's no benefit, right? Your, your sleep trumps exercise. So that is a big portion of making sure that you're, you're doing your very best um, to get the rest and recovery and the support you need through sleep. All right, number five, plan and prepare your meals. I get it, like I hear it all the time. Well, I just don't have time. You guys, there's services, there's so many different options. And to be honest though, dude, I, I prep twice a week, that's it, like twice a week, Sundays and Wednesdays. I get a good portion of my proteins done, um, any complex carbs that I'm dealing with. Um, my fats come pretty easy because I'm using avocado and almond butter. So it, it's really not as hard as you're making it. And I just did a full video um, that is somewhere on this Facebook page as well as my YouTube channel on how to food prep in under 45 minutes. The problem is if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I know you've heard that, but it's true. If you already have the food ready, you're less likely to drive through McDonald's, right? So you don't have that temptation. Um, not only that, but if you're eating your food throughout the day, again, back to number one, you're not going to be as tempted to, to eat junk, especially you know if you've done some good workouts and you don't wanna waste that on you know the crappy cupcakes that somebody brought to the office today because of somebody's birthday, right? Because my philosophy is, you know if I have to work that off, it better be the best cupcake I've had in my whole life. And it's probably not because I probably just got it from the grocery store down the road, but that's my philosophy. I'm not gonna eat it. I'd rather have something that I want, right? Um, okay, um, so again, kind of the, the whole take on that is that you'll your cravings will intensify if you're not getting enough sleep because your body has to preserve and, and get energy from somewhere. Um, number, uh, let's, oh, let's see, I kind of skipped around that, but that's okay. Um, also, on the planning and preparing, make sure that you have a plan B and a plan C. Um, again, I'm working on videos on that as we speak. Actually, with a plan C one, hopefully will be up tomorrow. And it's literally what to get at a convenience store if that's your only option. You can still salvage your goals, even if you're kind of struggling because you can't hit a grocery store or you, know, you, didn't, you didn't get your stuff prepared. So there are options. I personally, I don't even care if you're doing intermittent fasting, but make sure that you're at least getting enough food in that time window. Not a huge fan of like the three hour. I'm more of a circadian rhythm 12 hour, 10 to 12 hour fan, because at least that gives you the ability to eat throughout the day so that you're not bonking, right? You're not completely dying throughout the day, but that you're getting all of your food in throughout the day. And so you have the energy to make it through the day. I'm to the point in my life where um, although I'm not the leanest I've ever been at the moment, but I can tell if I have not had enough food because I'll hit a point in the day where my body goes, nope, we're just done for the today. Um, so I have to make sure that I am eating throughout the day just to support what I'm trying to accomplish because I'm pretty active at this point. Um, and so that can make a huge difference as well. <clears throat> All right, tip six. Now this is specifically for cravings. I kind of talked about this just a little bit. Usually when you crave something, it's because you're missing a nutrient or a, a bit, vitamin or a mineral. So you've probably seen some of the charts that say, you know, if you crave this, you're probably missing this. So the problem is, is if you, if you cave to the junk part that, you know, you think that you're 
craving, <laughs> you're still probably not getting what you're really missing. So take that into consideration. If you're getting a good variety of fruits and vegetables, um, your proteins, you're getting you know the healthy foods and not the processed junk. You guys, I don't care if it says that it's enriched with vitamins. First of all, that's crap <laughs> because it, it's just not the same quality. Your body doesn't absorb it the same. They're synthetic, right? Your body is designed to break down actual food um, and utilize it that that's what your body's designed to do so if you're eating pop tarts because it's enriched with vitamins i mean it's still hitting your blood sugar you're still storing fat there's still no benefit so the the benefits do not outweigh the downside to that particular situation so again if you're craving something you might need to take two steps back and figure out what is it that I'm, my body's missing because again, in order to function efficiently, right? Think of it as anti-aging, right? If you're trying to stay looking young, your skin can't repair itself if you're not giving it the vitamins and minerals it needs. Like, to me, that's just common sense. Eat what you need. You might have to get used to some stuff. Yeah, you might have to sacrifice that Twinkie every day. Choices, do you wanna look young or do you wanna eat Twinkies? You know, there's you're gonna have to make some decisions there, right? Um, and number seven, to some degree, guys, you're gonna, I, I personally recommend that you track your food even on the worst day. Like the day that you kind of go, I don't care, I'm gonna eat a bunch of, I just ate the entire pizza plus the gallon of ice cream plus, you know, a whole bag of Snickers. Okay, but you need to see what that damage did. And it's going to be eye-opening and it may prevent you from doing it again. The problem is, is we get into that mode of the, I call it the effort moment, where you just go, well, screw it, I just messed up. So now we might as well just let it all go. Problem being is then three weeks later, you can't figure out why you haven't bounced back. Um, plus you, you just don't even count it. Like it's, it doesn't exist. And the problem with that is it did damage. It, it did something to take you away from your goal, not towards it. So there, you've gotta be accountable for that, but it also helps you to realize why you're not getting closer to your goal because you did. And maybe you did that a couple of times in one week and then you're up 10 pounds. Now, again, that's probably mostly just water, but it does affect your psyche and how you, your motivation and how you feel about your goals. So if you track that and you start putting that pizza in and you realize you just ate like 5,000 calories, yeah, that's, that's a little bit the wrong direction we wanna go. Now, I'm not gonna slap your hand. That's not my job. I'm a coach, not a babysitter. But again, you have to be accountable to that because if you fall off the wagon, it's okay, but you gotta figure out what that did and then find a way to get back on and stay motivated from it. So hopefully that helps. Do you have anything that has worked for you that's helped you to avoid the cravings, avoid the temptation, and, and really help you kind of push through and stick with it? I'm aware it's not easy. It takes time. It's not gonna happen overnight. Um, it, success is messy. It's not linear. There's no straight line. If you're a perfectionist, I feel for you because it's rough, right? If we can't do everything right the first time, I give up. It's not gonna work like that, so you might as well get that out of your head right from the beginning. But I would love to hear from you. If you've had something that works for you, if you have a tip or a trick, or if you've found something to be really true with you or your family or your friends, you know, we'd love to hear it. Leave a comment below. Don't forget to, ch to um, subscribe on my YouTube channel. All of these get uploaded there, so if you can't find them on my Facebook page, you'll be able to find them in the future and see all those questions, and maybe you need to pass it along to somebody that you love who's really struggling as well that's why we do this right I just want to educate you and help you to understand through the crazy misinformation and and conflicting information for that matter how your body really works right and then it does take time to get into a lifestyle that's healthy so have an incredible day you guys hopefully we'll see you now next Wednesday I will be in Miami so I cannot promise um, actually I'll be in Key West I can't promise there's going to be a Q&A just because I am not really sure where we're going to be, um, but I'll let you know for sure because I'll post it. You know, I'll post what I always post. So have an incredible week, you guys. That is Q&A Wednesday. Goodbye.